you see these adorable marshmallow mugs? They are so darn cute. And if you add some seasonal details to them, like say a crocheted hat, they become some really great seasonal decor. They fit perfectly on tiered trays or as standalone decorations. I have patterns for these adorable little hats. I'm gonna roll out a new pattern toward the end of every month so that your marshmallow mugs can be decorated for the whole year. These are great to give as gifts. They are adorable. You can put stuff inside the mugs and then put the hat on top. And if you make a full set for the whole year, that is one fantastic gift. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the like button. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really cute striped marshmallow mug hat. And I'm using all, um, well, this part of it is all Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. I have white, royal blue, and stone wash. And if it helps you to visualize the pattern, I start at the top and I'm gonna do two rows of the dark blue, well, royal blue, one of the white, two of the stone wash, one of the white, two of the royal blue, and so on, all the way down to the end. And this is Bernat Pipsqueak yarn. Very cute. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with my royal blue and an H hook. Here's my four millimeter H hook. And I'm gonna start with a magic circle. So, or a magic ring. I've seen it called both things. I take my tail end here. I'm going to wrap this around like this. So you have kind of an X. And on the back side of my fingers, I'm gonna stick my hook in and just pull up a loop. I'm gonna remove my fingers. I still want this circle here. And I'm just gonna do one chain to secure it to my magic ring. Now, the rest of my stitches here in this first row are going to be done over top of these two pieces. So your tail end and then this part of your circle, we're gonna be wrapping our stitches around that. So I'm gonna do four half double crochets. So I'm gonna yarn over go into the middle of the loop, pick up a loop. Now I have three loops on. You yarn over and pull through. And that's your first half double crochet. Now I tend to, as I do this, my loop, I pull on it and so it gets a little bit bigger and bigger. So you just pull on this tail and it tightens it up. So you can kind of hold it in place so that hopefully you don't do that too much, but it's not a big deal if you have to tighten it. So here's my second one. I'm gonna yarn over, go underneath, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through. That's number two. I'm gonna go through the loop again. Pull up a loop, here we go. Yarn over, that's three. And my fourth, so yarn over into the middle, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull, whoops, I dropped it. And pull through. So there's your four half double crochets. Now we're just gonna use that tail end to tighten the loop. You just pull it closed so that there isn't a hole anymore and that's what I call row one. Now you're just gonna do one stitch in each of those stitches, so four more for row two. I'm going to yarn over, go into this first loop here, the first one I did, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. Now, just because here in the beginning there's a lot going on, I am going to use a stitch marker. Makes it easier to find, right? I know this is my first stitch of the row, just like that. So that's my first stitch and I'm going to continue in the royal blue. Here we go, yarn over under my second stitch, yarn over, pull through, that's two. Over here is three and over here, looks like it's kind of far away, but it'll work out, is number four. Now, I have just gone underneath, I've pulled up a loop. Now, instead of finishing this stitch, because I'm switching colors, what I'm gonna do is finish the stitch in my next color. The next color in my pattern is white. So I'm gonna find the end of my white. And then I'm gonna leave myself a bit of a tail to weave in later, and I'm gonna I kind of pinch it around the head of my yarn like this to hold it in place and I just pull it through like I would have with the blue. So now we're gonna leave the blue on the back. Don't cut that or anything. We wanna carry that up the back. 
And now for this next row, I'm going to do an increase in each stitch. So I'm going to do two half doubles in each stitch around. So that should give me eight at the end. So here's my first one. I'm going to pull it through and pull it up. I'm going to mark it. You don't really need to mark it because you're going to be able to tell because of the color and cha the change in color, you're going to be able to tell exactly where your first stitch is. Now, what makes this a little bit easier at this point is to push this toward you. Make a little hat with your finger like this because that's how you want your hat or your, yeah, your hat to end up. So this is the very tip of the hat and I'm just pushing it right side out. It makes it easier to see. So that's my first stitch. Now I'm going to do another stitch in that same one, right? Because we're doing an increase in each stitch. So that was two in that one. Here's number three and four under this one into the same stitch. And this is going to be, oops, sorry, five and six. And then seven and eight. Now I'm switching colors after this one because I only do one row of white. So we're going to go underneath, pull up a loop. Now don't finish with the white because we're switching colors. I'm going to switch to my stone wash. So leave myself a tail. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. I pinch it around the end of my hook, pull through. There we go. And now this next row is just one half double crochet in each stitch. Now, as you go here, this loosens up a little bit sometimes on me. So let's see, let's finish the first stitch. That'll make it a little easier. I'm going to finish that first one, but see how this loop on top here, my first one is kind of wide. I use the little tail end and tighten it up. I'm going to do the same with the white. Just tighten it up a little bit. Not too tight. You want it to look like the rest of your stitches, but it makes it easier. You don't end up with this weird floppy stitch. So I'm going to mark that and just do, like I said, one stitch in each around. Now, all this mess on the back, all these yarns, give me to row five and we're going to clean that up a bit. So that's second stitch. Here's third, fourth, fifth, six, seven. Now I'm not switching colors here because I do two rows of each of the blues before I switch colors, but here's where we're going to start carrying our yarn up. We don't want to have all these. If you cut your yarns after each row, you're going to end up with about a thousand of these on the inside that you have to weave in at the end, which is really annoying. So what we're going to do is carry it up the back. So I'm working with the light blue. What I'm going to do in my last stitch here of the row, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go underneath the white, my, my loops, and I'm going to go underneath the two colors here that I am not using. You can kind of drop the blue. I'm going to go underneath these two, pick up a loop with the color you're using. You just yarn over and pull through like that. Now these are being carried inside kind of up right here near your first stitch of each row. One, two, three. This is my fourth row. I'm going to go on to my fifth row. This one we do, we start with one stitch here in your first stitch. I'm going to mark that. So that's one. In the next one, you're going to do two. And after this row, I promise we're going to clean up some of that mess and make it easier to deal with. And now we're going to go back to the next stitch. We're going to do one. So your pattern is one, two in this one, one in that one. So the next stitch I'm going to do two. The next stitch is going to just be one. That's our pattern for this row. The next stitch is going to be two. And at the end of that, you should have 12. Now at this point, we are changing colors. I'm first, I'm going to carry my yarns. So I'm using the light blue. So yarn over, go underneath your loop, underneath your two working yarns. Oh, I can't wait to cut these. I hate having all this stuff on the back. It drives me nuts. And then you're going to yarn over with the light blue and we're switching back to our white. So I'm going to finish this stitch 
with the white like that. Okay, I'm going to do one more stitch here just to make it easier. This is just another round where we just do one in each, so you can do a couple more just to get that yarn kind of, to get that row going. That doesn't look right. Nope. Pull that one out. All right, we're going to do that. Now, I'm going to pull up my loop here in the back so that I don't drop it. Now, I'm going to flip this inside out. Watch out for your working yarns, the ones that are still attached to your skein. Those we're going to keep long because we're going to keep working with them. So here's my working ones right here. Just put those kind of off to the side. These, your tails, I'm going to tie off. I'm going to tie into knots here. Mm, maybe not these two because that'll tighten up my first part. I'm going to tighten, I'm going to use my white and my light blue here. I'm going to knot them and I'm going to weave these ends in. All right, so I'm going to use my darning needle. I'm going to thread that on and just go under this, the stitches of the same color so you can't see it on the other side. A couple stitches one way, a couple back the other way, just weave in your ends to secure your work and then we get to trim this part off really close and I have one last strand I'm fighting with on the back. I'll do the same for the white. Okay now for this blue piece this is the one that you this is the end of your magic circle so what I'm gonna do for this one is it just a little bit different is you can see the circle here kind of here at the end I'm just gonna go I wanna make sure it's tight first of all because you don't want that to open and then I'm gonna kind of just go in these first stitches around kind of in the circle that I made at the beginning and that secures your circle so it's not gonna come undone. I just kind of went in that circle motion with it and then we trim this off and look, I mean it's still, you still have some hanging off but it's a lot easier to work with than it was before. So here's what we have so far Look, see that one I didn't get trimmed very well. We gotta cut that, it's gross looking. All right, now we're gonna go back and keep following the pattern. This row is just one half double crochet around for a total of 12. So I'm gonna do that thing again where I go underneath the yarns. I'm gonna use the one I'm working with to pull through and now my next row will be dark blue so I'm going to finish the stitch in dark blue. Now this row you're going to do one stitch here in this first one. I'll mark it, you don't necessarily have to because you're going to be able to tell where you started this row but that's one and then we're going to do two so there's one, one and then in our third stitch we're going to do two stitches. So that is a pattern for this row. One, one, two. And now the next one will be one, and then one, and then two. All the way around to the beginning. Now the rest of this pattern is just going to be increases like that followed by a row of just one in each. So this row I'm increasing then there's going to be another row of dark blue where it's just one in each stitch. And then on my row of white, I'm going to do one, 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 two. So one, two, three, four, five. And then after that, another row of just a single, or I mean a half double crochet in each one around. And I'm going to continue that pattern until I get up to my increase row will be eight singles and one double. That'll be a total of 40 stitches in that row. Just wanted to show you what it looks like as we're carrying the yarn up the inside, you end up with like this sort of row right here. Okay, I have finished the regular worsted weight part of the hat with all the stripes. There are 40 stitches in my last row. And I just wanted to show you that up the back here, you can see this line 
because we're doing it in the round and changing colors, it's really obvious. It's kind of gross looking. I just want to show you that the way I finish this hat, I fold it down like this. You can see in this one, it's folded down. I attach it to the side and it completely covers that seam, front and back. You can't see it at all. So just so you know, so you're not like, wow, that looks really disgusting. <laughs> it won't when you're done. So my last stitch here of this row, I'm going to finish with, I'm going to add in this Bernat Pipsqueak right here. It is the color whitey white. It's adorable and soft and fuzzy. So I'm gonna add it to the brim of my hat. So I just need to find the end here. Here we go. And I'm gonna finish that last stitch with the burnout, leave myself a bit of a tail and add it in. So I'm just gonna do that. And now I'm gonna do one half double crochet in each stitch around with the pip squeak, just like this. So I've got one row round um, on the back, or I mean at, at the brim, and I also should have mentioned that this, you don't need this anymore, this blue, so you can tie these off, weave these in, get them out of your way. Okay, I like to add a second row of the pip squeak, I just like a little bit thicker of a brim. You can stop here if you'd like, if you like the look of that, then you can just stay there. Now, the trick is, so you can't see your stitches, like at all, with the pip squeak, but because we're only doing a second row, it's kind of easy because everywhere you see this kind of spike of blue in between, that's where you're gonna put a stitch. That's in between these stitches, just like this. So here's one, so here's, here's a little spike right here. I'm gonna go underneath there, that's two. So this is, that's how I find the stitches. You can do it by feel too, you can also feel where the stitches are with your fingers because you can feel in between the fuzz. Okay, I'm all the way back around. I'm just gonna slip stitch in the general area of my first stitch. Uh, give myself a bit of a tail and pull it out. Now, I will say that this part is gonna be covered because you're trying to cover this line here. So I'm gonna fold it over like this but just to be on the safe side, this part I can actually make look better because there's a bit of a jog here, like from here to here, it kind of goes up. So I use my tail, I'm gonna kind of thread it through to get to the top of that first row, bottom of the first row, however you look at it. And I'm just gonna go across this space with my tail that I have to weave in anyway. So I'm kind of weaving it in, but I'm weaving it in over that area and you can see that just completely hides it like it's no one else is going to notice that you had a step up there with your yarn so I'm just going to weave in my ends okay so I've tucked in my ends trimmed it all off and the basic portion of the hat is completely ready you could use it just like this as is I personally like to fold down over this side I want to make sure this is covered <laughs> I don't want it to accidentally kind of pop up and be visible so I'm gonna just take a little bit of yarn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna match the blue to the blue because that's where I'm gonna put it. I like to bend it over. I put the end of it a little bit farther past the bottom of the brim and I like how that looks. So now all, I gonna, all I'm going to do is attach this. Actually, no, I'm gonna put it up a little bit higher. I'm gonna put it up here because my pom pom is gonna come below it. So all you need to do is use your darning needle if you can track it down. Oh, it's right here in front of me, okay. And I'm gonna use my little bit of dark blue and I'm just gonna put it in there and all I'm gonna do is figure out, make sure I'm covering the, the gross part like this. I'm gonna come from the back in the dark blue into this dark blue here. I'm gonna leave the tail on the other side and just move over a little bit and go back down and now I should have two tails on this side and I just tie them together and weave in my ends so that the hat sits exactly how I want it to sit. This side doesn't move. Okay, so I have finished it all off. The hat is cute as is. I like to add pom-poms. So I'm gonna show you how I made this pom-pom which is made with the pip squeak yarn itself just like the brim here. So I'll start with that. I'm gonna use the pip squeak. I'm gonna do a magic circle, magic ring, whatever you call it. 
cross it over like that and behind my fingers I go down with my hook I grab the yarn remove my fingers and now I'm just going to do one chain to secure my yarn here in the magic ring if I can find a hole there we go okay so now what I'm going to do is put 16 half double crochets into this circle oh I knocked over my little hand so I'm going to work over these two the end and the part of the circle I'm going to yarn over go through the circle pick up my yarn there are three loops here you can't really tell because it's all fuzzy but I'm going to yarn over and pull through that's one half double crochet so yarn over through the loop pull up a loop and now it's two so I'm just going to do the rest till I get to 16 just like that there we go so I'm gonna take the tail end and I'm gonna gently pull so it closes the hole so now you have like this little furry circle I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit okay now all I'm gonna do is grab a stitch marker because you can't see your stitches at all and I'm gonna attempt to do an increase in each one of my stitches so I should end up with about 32 if you're a little bit less a little bit more that's okay because if you can't tell no one else can tell so there's my first and I'm going to try to do two in each stitch around okay so I've got about 32 stitches around and I am just going to slip stitch to my first and I'm gonna leave myself kind of a long tail because I'm using this to tie it on to eh, not too long a tail I don't know 12 16 inches I don't I just kind of eyeball that and I'm gonna pull this through finish off the loop and the first thing I need to do is pull tight my the beginning my magic circle part and I'm going to weave in this end to secure it so like I said make sure it's tight and then I just go kind of in the circle around the that first set of stitches to secure it I'm gonna go just weave it in and then you can trim that off after you've done that part I'm gonna make this the inside of my pom-pom maybe yeah all right so now I'm gonna take the long end that I left myself and I am going to close the top we're gonna to make it like a ball so we take this now in here are your stitches you don't even need to really see them but kind of on the inside of your stitches what you want to do is come in and then go out in one stitch out the next stitch toward your circle and that will cinch up the top you'll close it I'm gonna go around the circle all the way around just like that so in and then out and then tighten it and as you tighten you'll see it starts to close now when you think you could stitch mark this and you know if you made it all the way back around I just keep going around until it looks like my hole is pretty much closed in the top here and then I just go from one side to the other to finish up closing it this yarn is very forgiving you can't see it definitely no one else is gonna be able to see no one else is gonna be able to see at all if you have weird stitches at the top of this because this yarn is so fuzzy it covers everything so you do this and there is my little pom-pom my perfect little pom-pom and now I just attach it to the end of my hat so I go through one side pull it up like that now I'm going to go up through my pom-pom come out the other side and then go back through the bottom of the hat and do that just a couple times so that I feel like my pom-pom is pretty secure I'm going to knot it by coming back down through here through the side of my blue here and then I'm gonna just go through the center and knot it 
And then to hide my end, I'm just going to go up through the middle, come out the top, and trim it right here. So there you have it. There is your adorable little mug hat. Okay, so I thought I'd also show you how to make this little pom-pom that has the three colors in it that fits on here. If you wanted that style, I can show you how to do that one. I use the Clover pom-pom makers because they are just awesome at making pom-poms. It makes your life so much easier and they stay together and they're fantastic. So what you do, this is the one and five eighths inch pom-pom maker. They have all the different sizes that you can make. You can make all kinds of sizes with them, but this is the one and five eighths. So what you do is you open up these two, they kind of move like this. We're going to open up both sides, just like this. And I'm gonna take all three colors that I want my pom-pom to be. It's the three colors I used in the striped hat, which is the white and the stonewash and the, what did I, what did I say that was? Royal blue from I Love This Yarn and you just kind of leave yourself an end, a tail. You don't need it, but it just makes it easier to start. And you're gonna start wrapping around this piece right here. And I like to wrap until it's level with these pieces, maybe a little bit taller, but you gotta wrap all the way around. You wanna cover that whole white area. And because you're using three pieces of yarn, it goes pretty fast, especially for this little size pom-pom. So you just keep wrapping till it's pretty much even across the whole thing. All right, so that's that side. I like to make it nice and full. I like full, I like big pom-poms. So, all right, we're gonna do that. And then we're just gonna come across, actually, I'm sorry, I did that in the wrong order. I'm not supposed to close it yet. All right, so once you get it to this point, we're gonna stretch it across here and just start on the other side. Start wrapping over here. And I really like full pom-poms. I like them chunky. So I wrap a lot. I, I make sure it's even across that whole white area and it's taller than this at least, or at least even with it, if not taller. So at this point, I'm done. I am going to close it on the top and flip it over and close this end. Now you can trim this off. You're done with this. And this point, see it's all together like this. There's a groove right here down the middle of this where there's this hole, this notch right here. You're gonna stick your scissors in and you're going to trim up the middle here. You can see this notch right here in the middle. That's what you're aiming for with your scissors. You just aim in the middle there. It makes it very easy to cut. That's one side. I'm gonna flip it over and then aim for the notches right here and just cut up the back like so. Once you have it all cut, now you need to pick one piece of yarn. It depends on where I was going to attach it. I'm, if I was attaching it to this one, then I'm going to pick this stonewash color because I'm also attaching the pom-pom to the hat with this. So it'll make it a little easier to blend in if I use the same color. I'm going to grab one a piece, I don't know, 12, 16 inches long. And I'm going to use it and I'm gonna go right down into that center notch. I'm gonna press it in all the way to the center, flip it over, pull it up through the middle. You'll feel it kind of settle in to the very center of this tool. And now I'm gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna pull it really tight because this is what holds your whole pom-pom together. All those little pieces are getting held together with this piece of yarn. So I go really tight and then I flip it over and I'm gonna pull it up to the other side and tie a second knot to try to make it very secure. I'm once again gonna pull really tight. Don't break your yarn, I've done that too. Don't pull too tight, but nice and tight. Okay, so these ends, that's what you're going to be attaching it with. So at this point, you're gonna remove those white pieces that you wrapped around, not remove them, you just pull them out of the way, like this. And the, this, these two yellow center pieces will pull apart. So you just pop 
pop one out, pop the other out. Say they have this pin in the middle. You're just gonna remove it from there. And ta-da, look at your pom-pom. Now, this part is kind of fun. Make sure you don't cut these because you're attaching with these, but you need to give it a haircut, okay? You want all of this to be even and rounded. And I tend to go a little crazy. Once you start cutting, it's a little addicting because you just want to have nice, even pom-pom. So you just keep trimming, trimming, trimming. And when you've made this kind of colossal mess and you think it's about even, I take the two tails that I have been careful not to cut and I usually like to give it a shake. You shake off the, the mess you've made and it fluffs it up. And ta-da, this one's a little larger than the other one. Oh, look though, see, I found some other stuff I want to trim off. <laughs> this is why I have to make my pom-poms a little bit bigger than what I want them to end at because I trim them down so much, which you don't have to do, but you know, it's fun. Okay, so here's my pom-pom, and then I would just attach this the same way I attached the pipsqueak one. Look how cute. Your January mug hat is done. I like to throw a gift card inside the mug or toss in some candy and then put the whole thing in a small cellophane bag. Or you can crochet along with me as I release a new pattern each month and you'll have a whole year's worth to give away. Happy crafting!